So he moves to London, he talked to me about commodities, so I want to help him uh, do the move. So I would really like to know who the commodities expert in our organization is in London. So I'm asking, the, it's 7 p.m., it's 7, 7 15, nobody's around anymore, I can't ask anybody. So I am asking, well, you know, who is looking after, sorry, after commodities? Now, luckily, somebody else has already uh, asked a similar question, which really saves me a lot of time. I can see here, it's not exactly the same, but it's probably close enough. You know, who's the contact for commodities in London? So, I am selecting this question. I can see Halle Berry was so nice to provide the solution to the previous question poser and said, you know, you can really talk to Barry Gold uh, or check in the address book. Now, I find this extremely helpful. I rate here with five stars. And, um, and so my problem is solved today, tonight. However, again, it's 7.15. I sit here, I'm gonna talk to my client tomorrow morning. I really would like to appear a little bit more knowledgeable of what he just uh, had the conversation with me. So. I'm going to ask uh, a little bit more about commodities because I would really like to be able to answer this question tomorrow morning. I'm going to ask here, this is the core functionality, which commodities are, and now I'd like to point your attention to the auto tagging function at the bottom of the question here. So while I'm typing here, it automatically populates what kind of relationships already exist in the brain between what I'm typing and the tags. Now, it will change because I, today I really want to know what commodities are traded, and you will find that previously we had gold and soybeans. However, because now I'm adding this uh, search tag of trading, you know, the brain knows that, you know, probably you're a little bit more interested yeah, or this was previously asked. So, okay, sounds pretty good. I um, think my client has. And so I'm going to ask, I'm going to add the tag London here. So, and off I send the question to our brain that then automatically routes to the expert that is best suitable, suited to answer the question. Uh, in addition to asking questions and uh, replying, we have some we have some intelligence and analytics. So I can look at my own profile here. I'm, I left the demo environment. I'm now in our production environment for inside the company. You can see here uh, my know-how profile. Okay. It happens to know the brain that I know a lot about Montreal here. I know a lot about Series A, because so I guess it's pretty good. I know some um, aspects of winter, which kind of makes sense if you know about Montreal. I know something about sales and star mind and venture capital. These uh, maps change dynamically, so you know depending on how good I am rated by my peers and uh, how well appreciated my contributions are, my relationships to these topics grow or shrink over time. Now, I can also look at my activity streams here. Um, my personal activity, I'm sorry, I can see how many questions I asked. I can see how good my rating is. Apparently, my peers are not very convinced about the quality of my contribution. I only get 3.7 out of 5 possible. Not very good. So, and lastly, we have some intelligence built in. We have a management cockpit, which we make available. What you can see here is, again, is our production environment. The top 100 topics within uh, the corporation. Now, I really appreciate Pascal and uh, Mark being here today. However, next week, we're going to have a sales pitch at LinkedIn. And I'm not quite sure whether they are the right guys to take the LinkedIn with me. So, why don't I find the best sales guy? 
And I'm really also interested in LinkedIn, which I can't find here, so I'm just adding the tag here. Okay, I would like to find the perfect guys to talk about LinkedIn. Well, that's not bad. So Mark and Pascal are ranking at the top intersection of LinkedIn and sales. However, it's a really technical presentation next week, so I would like to take the Scala experts that we have with us to the f in the firm to the pitch. So I find, you know, Pascal doesn't make the list because Daniel and uh, Pascal Moret is much, much more uh, uh, able to answer questions here. Last item on the, sorry about that, last item on the intelligence is we do measure our performance. And uh, as Pascal mentioned, so we measure the time to solution. Now in our internal network, we solve all questions, 55% uh, of the questions in less than two hours. We solve 90%, uh, 89% of the questions. We get an average of 4.4 uh, on the solutions. You can see here the content distribution. And most interestingly to our, for our clients is where do we get good ratings? What topics you know, do people really know about? And more interestingly, where don't we have Answers. So, you know, apparently within Starmind, we don't know about laptops and iPads. So, uh, maybe some action required. And that's it. That's on the demo. Thank you very much. So these are uh, self-learning neural networks. Um, Mark von Tobel built them. Do you have any tough questions to our CTO? Please. So is there any, uh, Thank you. So actually, what we build is a prediction model, a prediction engine on, that can tell you with, what you said, like 98% of, uh, up to 98% of all questions we can find or predict who is the right person to answer it. And all of that is based on a, a know-how, something we call the know-how map. And this is a, a map that symbolizes like all the relations between topics based on heavy learning rules. So we have a really big map of topics, how they are interrelated, and we analyze uh, how people are interacting with those topics and topic clusters. For example, asking a question reveals that you're at least interested in those topics that uh, are mentioned in the in the question. Solving a question uh, might be an indicator that uh, you have some expertise in it when you get a good rating we are much more confident that uh, you are you really have uh, expertise in that topics and every time when we learn something we also forget something so uh, we have a retrieval uh, induced forgetting mechanism so every time we learn something uh, we also forget in the same cluster something else so that it's like a short time memory about who knows what and we mix that with other dimensions for example availability, load balancing, so that not that everyone, uh, someone has to answer all the questions, uh, also language probabilities and stuff like that. So in the end we can just give you a prediction of who is the best person at the moment to solve your question. What kinds of data do you ingest? How do you ingest it? Who decides what goes in? Can you repeat the question also? I'm sorry? Can you repeat the question? So, as far as I understood, how do we initialize like the the brain at the beginning? Yeah. And what data do you put in? So, so we always start with about a hundred questions, so that no one uh, finds a, an empty system. And then we ask everyone uh, that joins the network, uh, we we tell them or we we send them five questions and ask them. Could you solve one of them? And if not, do you know anyone within your company that could solve it? So we get those initial links between users and uh, topics. And then with every interaction, with everything you search for, with every solution you read, with every question you pose, you, uh, we learn constantly what you're interested in and where your expertise lies. So it grows over time and it gets more precise over time. So the, the users both ask and answer. Yes, yes. Yeah, 
to? La ladies first, please. Yeah. Yes, sorry. Um, what's the minimum group size you would recommend using with that? That's a good question. We started with uh, two small groups at the beginning. We thought maybe companies with 200 people could already use it. Then we found out that it's a brain with uh, too few brain cells. It's just, it's just not, <laughs> not too interesting. So at the moment we're targeting uh, companies with 5,000 or more employees. Which data? Well, the questions and the answers. The, the data resides within the system, so everyone one can look it up. In our data centers, we do have an on-premise solution, but most of our clients use it uh, in the cloud. And we do have, just to follow, uh, one more thing, we do have some uh, a feature that you can uh, put an expiry date on your solution so that uh, after a while a solution is not uh, marked as, well, as valid anymore. So if you find this Barclays bank, does the Barclays say to you, we only want the brain to work with an active Barclays staff and Barclays activities? What about if you say, but well, wait a minute, there's Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, or whatever other bank you like, and you'd like to have the best of the best? How do you cope with that? Well, actually, that's uh, our next product development uh, step. It's, uh, we call it the ecosystem uh, case, so that you can not only ask questions to your uh, employees, but also to the whole ecosystem around it. We don't have that yet, but we are piloting it with uh, our first client. Time for one more. How are you charging? Well, we are charging. Oh, that's actually a sales question. You want, oh, you want to ask. Maybe I can then complete the round. Um, we had no clue how uh, about the pricing model, because how should you charge a brain of a company? So what we did actually, whenever someone consumed the solution and they gave five out of five stars, we asked this person, how much time did you just now save by consuming this solution? And they indicated five hours, three weeks, three months. So we just run, let that run for a few thousand times within one uh, company that we pilot the system, and it came out a few million of US dollars saved within three months of pilot. So we thought, oh, maybe we should up the pricing a little bit. So now the pricing is a user-based model, and uh, you, we can get a few hundred thousand uh, US dollars per, um, um, actually per year, depending on how many people are using the system. <laughs> yeah, actually, if it wasn't the demo brain, yeah? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for